Today I'm going to talk about yielding. Uh, to say that yielding was an important subject in Tai Chi Chuan would be quite an understatement. Uh, it has a super importance for one very interesting reason. Uh, tai Chi Chuan is full of things that you uh, do well with training, but when you're actually, you know, at an advanced level or when you're fighting, you don't actually do those things anymore. There are protocols that uh, make it easier to do something, learn something, but the thing you're learning is more important than the protocol, so you throw it away. I call them disposable exercises or disposable rules. Uh, so it's full of those. Uh, yielding is not one of them. Yielding is something that at the highest level of your practice you always do. Uh, yielding is the most unlikely thing that most you know, uh, fighters who would think that you would be learning how to do because you're literally learning to not resist anything that the opponent tries to make you do. Not when he puts pressure on you, you yield, you move in the direction that he wants you to move. Uh, and uh, as I say, this is not a disposable exercise. This is not, you know, of course, we practice the form very slowly. Of course, when we are fighting, we don't go slowly. Uh, we practice Tui show where your feet don't move. But of course, in fighting, your feet move. Uh, we practice yielding. And no matter what happens, we still practice yielding. It is not a throwaway thing. So it's something that, in fact, at the highest level is a kind of discriminatory thing. Uh, you, all, you have a sort of hierarchy of uh, uh, rules that you might follow when you're learning Tai Chi Chuan. And at a certain point, they trump each other. Yielding is one that trumps almost everything else. Not everything, but almost everything else. <clears throat> now, yielding is defined as, uh, in the classics, as when I am soft and the opponent is hard, uh, it is called yielding. So this is a very important quality of it, and that is that uh, it is softness. Now, notice you can be... You can be soft and still not move. <laughs> Imagine a, a big soft cat <laughs> that doesn't want to move. Or a giant ball, uh, you know, medicine ball or something that's heavy, but when you push on it, it's soft. Softness means there's some internal change that takes place. So it means you are never a hard object yourself. Uh, but uh, it means that even, you, in other words, you don't escape from a touch. If someone tries to touch you, you yield. Yielding means that you try to keep the pressure from getting to you, and you make internal changes in order to make that happen. So, so yielding is, uh, as I say, uh, something that no matter what happens at the highest level of your training, it is your absolute first impulse, your first reflex when anyone does anything, is to yield. It's your rule. <clears throat> Now, it's usually considered the correct pressure. It's a mutual pressure, of course, because uh, pressure is always mutual. So two people have to agree on what this mutual pressure should be in their practice. Uh, the usual agreement is about 100 grams, about four ounces. This is a useful pressure. Now, this exact pressure is a throwaway. In other words, uh, it's close to something that's meaningful in terms of, uh, you know, so you want to keep it light. But uh, the, as I say, the exact pressure that you're using uh, is the best for training. In other words, you want to do something that you can, you, each one of you can feel easily. If both people try to keep their pressure as light as possible, <laughs> then nobody will feel anything. Uh, and it will be a very unproductive. Uh, so you want the pressure to be an agreement that produces the most activity, the most internal activity. Uh, when you're doing twice show and when you're practicing with each other, uh, one of the reasons you're not moving your feet is because it would be too easy to yield just by moving away from the person with your moving your center away. Uh, no, you have to neutralize his pressure that he's trying to put on you, but you have to do it without moving your feet. This means that you will, you know, make much more internal change than external. If you run away from him, that's an external movement. If you just 
stay in the same place and you try to keep the pressure from happening, that's an internal change. Uh, but you must understand, the person who is putting the touch on you, it's his obligation to yield as well. Uh, you should not think that the practice of yielding is always a kind of one-way street where one of you agrees to practice yielding and the other agrees to make it really difficult for him to do so uh, by trying to follow him around and push him around. Uh, and of course, when you see a demonstration of uh, someone, you know, touching someone on the other person yielding, uh, however good or bad a demonstration it is, it's really a demonstration of the skill of the person yielding, not the skill of the person touching him. Uh, <clears throat> so your initial practice in yielding is simply to get away without changing the pressure level. So as I say, you can't escape, but uh, and to remain soft. As I say, if you if you have an exercise like Tui Show, then you have a situation in which you are forced to make internal changes because the external ones are forbidden, and you can't just run away from the touch. As I say, though, the person who is uh, attacking, you might say, should never think of him as yielding any less than the person who he's touching. If he touches a place that is hard, he should follow a rule that is extremely important. Never push on what is hard. It is hard to, <laughs> it is difficult to avoid this because it's our instinctive way of being able to move any object. If you want to move an object, you don't push on some place where there's internal change because then the object doesn't move. You find a hard place such that when you push it, it makes the whole thing move. This is a sort of instinctive thing. Uh, so, as I say, the person that you're pushing, of course, he is supposed to get away from you. And he, but the point is, he is supposed to keep this pressure the same. So you should follow the same rule if you are touching the person. Uh, whatever is happening, you want to keep the pressure the same too. So if you try to increase it a little bit beyond that and the person doesn't move, stop. You can change. You can push somewhere else. You can find some place that's soft. The best is if you can find a place that is soft that is just right next to the place that was hard. You can just change the angle of your movement a little bit, then you will find you know, some kind of you know, change taking place in the other person. But this is the way this exercise works. So this is our initial exercise. It's like saying we're making a complete abstraction here. We're saying we're not going to follow any rules except, well, two rules. Uh, one of them is uh, we're going to completely keep the pressure the same, and the other one is we're not going to move our feet. So between these two rules, we'll find ourselves, you know, doing a lot of wiggling around. Now, uh, you might say the purpose, you know, in Tai Chi Chuan, we keep adding... Uh, more and more restrictions to this, and what you do becomes more and more disciplined instead of just moving around. But this couldn't this couldn't be accomplished without the you know advent of other things that are happening, like you're returning the force to the person and so forth. But the most important thing is the yielding. <clears throat> In other words, like uh, almost all of the Tai Chi Chuan protocols, they're all for the purpose of instilling some sort of unconscious habit that functions completely on automatic pilot because it's got to if you're going to actually have it work when you're fighting. You can't be thinking about anything when you're fighting. And uh, all of them are for that purpose. And the most important uh, automatic pilot is yielding. You want to make sure that that is your first instinct whenever anything happens. And that, uh, depending on how much highly trained you are after that, uh, this will result in varying amounts of skill. But you never reach the point where your level or your activity or your particular protocol or anything says that, oh, now it's time to stop yielding. And, you know. Now, there's a classic that says, from being like the river, you become like the mountain. Uh, this uh, would imply that at some point of yielding, 
uh, at some point of your, you know, your skill, this yielding suddenly becomes really hard. So this momentary hardness, uh, this can happen. This is uh, Faji. Uh, but you might think of this as a sort of anomaly, a sort of singularity in the whole mechanism that you are applying to the other person. In other words, uh, you're, you're sort of like a mathematical function that you have an input and it does certain things with it. And there's certain stuff that there's certain points at which the whole thing breaks down and it does something else. Uh, that's what you should think of as a discharge. And, uh, when you, uh, so you don't change your mind. You don't say, okay, I've been yielding, I've been yielding, I've been yielding, and now I'm going to stop yielding just for a second here. No, even the discharge itself comes from your impulse of yielding. So uh, <clears throat> that's, that's why you want to train it so absolutely and say, no matter what the uh, circumstance, my first solution, the first key to the solution is always to yield. There's a classic that says a, a feather cannot be placed, a fly cannot alight. You know, and you can't like touch someone so that he's not. And but the, more importantly, there's a the classic that says, "One eye am, am soft and the appointment is hard." In other words, you can't just even keep the pressure the same. You have to feel soft to your opponent, and this is uh, always a matter of the opponent's opinion. Uh, in other words, it's nonsensical if someone says you don't feel soft to tell them, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> you just don't realize it. You can't argue with someone about how you feel to them. If you feel soft, you feel soft. Uh, and, but it has nothing to do with how you might look or make shapes. You must not make softness uh, into a fetish. Uh, by this, I mean, sometimes when people um, are learning Tai Chi Chuan at the very beginning, they sort of want to display that they're like studying something very esoteric. So they affect a kind of extreme, you know, sort of super softness. They want to, to pass them on their feet and say, wow, that guy looked awfully soft. <laughs> and uh, Tai Chi Chuan, I'm afraid, is not susceptible to this kind of uh, thing. It's, uh, it's pretty invisible. Everything you're learning is a very invisible thing that nobody's going to see passing you on the street. As the uh, old Chinese saying goes, the martial hero looks like an ordinary man. Uh, and Tai Chi is more true of that than any other martial art, perhaps. It's extremely uh, uh, deceptively normal like that. But like I say, uh, this doesn't mean that you are not soft. Uh, I might... When somebody saw me doing the forms uh, in the class, and I was doing them quite large, uh, for, he said, oh, later when we had with he said, oh, when I saw you do the forms, I, 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 I thought you were hard. You're not. You're very soft. It's very deceiving. He didn't expect that uh, because I wasn't trying to look especially soft when I did the forms. The softness is something that it depends on your re re response to the opponent or to the partner, however you want to call them. Uh, it's always relative to that. It's not a condition. You can't get up today and say, I'm going to be softer today than I was yesterday. You can't sort of work at being soft while you're walking around. You have to practice. It's a skill. You might say it's a skill masquerading as a condition. But it is a skill, and it's something you have to learn to do. And it's called yielding. There are only three real uh, distinguishing marks of Tai Chi Chuan above other martial arts, yielding, adherence, and discharge. And today we've talked about yielding.